I've been hanging out of town in that low down way Just to watch him good time, Charlie friend is driving me insane Up on a shady Charlotte street, all the green lights turn red And I wish I was back home on the farm in my feather bed Got myself a rocking chair to see if I could lose These thin dime hard time hell on Church Street blues Got myself a picker friend and read yesterday's news And I folded up page 21 and stuck it in my shoes I gave me a nickel to the poor, my good term for the day And I folded out my old billfold and threw it far away Get myself a rocking chair to see if I could lose These thin dime part-time hell on Church Street blues What's up everybody, Brandon Johnson here again and thanks for joining me. Today I wanted to revisit one of my all-time favorite tunes, Church Street Blues. And I actually think that this was the very first Tony Rice song that I ever heard. And last time I was in Nashville we were driving near the Ryman Auditorium and there's a, a street there called Church Street and I believe that this is the original Church Street from the tune, although I'm not entirely sure about that. And we're going to be playing this song out of capo 3, out of E flat in the C position. And what's cool about this song is that the melody, or the head of the song, is played largely around the chords themselves. So you can kind of think of this song as like a hybrid between rhythm and flat picking. So you can really play this whole melody by just holding chords. So we'll work on that in this lesson. We'll work on some of the articulation that will allow you to kind of play the melody over these chords. And we'll also look at the rhythm part as well. So if you were singing Church Street Blues, kind of some of the, some of the ways that you can move from chord to chord, and then also some really, really cool kind of Tony Rice rhythm concepts in there. So I hope you enjoy this one, and let's check it out. Okay, let's check out measure number one now of Church Street Blues. So we have a two note pickup here. And keep in mind, we're playing this out of capo three, which is kind of the standard capo position that Tony Rice likes to use on this particular tune. So we're gonna be starting out out of the C major chord position out of capo three. That's gonna put us in the key of E flat. So we're gonna start out here while holding our C chord. We're gonna play open A to second fret A. And then with our, still with our hand on that C chord, we're going to play open D to second fret D. So you're playing an open A to second fret A with your ring finger. And then you're playing an open D to second fret D with your middle finger without moving your hand. And that's kind of the opening phrase of Church Street Blues. And right after that, you see two down strokes on eighth notes. That's gonna be your open G and your open B, which is just the, the higher register of the C chord we're holding. So those are eighth notes, so they're gonna come a little bit slower. Okay, and right after those two down strokes there, you're gonna see a pull off from the second fret D to open. 
And again, we're just holding our C chord position here and just playing a pull off on a downstroke with our middle finger. You can let that open G kind of ring out underneath. Okay, and right after you play that pull off, you're gonna get into your F major chord position here. And we're gonna play a downstroke now on the third fret A and the third fret D, followed by an upstroke on the third fret D and the second fret G. So you can see that pull off there, you're kind of getting into your F chord position in the middle of playing that pull off. So you can see there that pull off, that second fret D to open. Right after you play that, you're gonna get in right into your F chord shape. And you're gonna play that third fret A, third fret D, and then an upstroke on the third fret D, second fret G, which is just notes out of that F chord shape. Okay, and then right after that, we're gonna do a little bit of cross picking here, and we're gonna play a downstroke on that third fret A again, followed by an upstroke on the third fret D. And then you're gonna see another pull off here, and that's from your second fret G to open. So there's a lot of these kind of classic Tony Rice pull-offs going on here. Okay, and then right after that pull-off there on that second fret G to open, we just have another third fret D to open G. Okay, and that's gonna lead us into measure number two. Okay, looking at measure number two now, we have an A minor chord here at the beginning of the measure. And when we play the lead section here, like what we're playing right now, you can kind of get away with just staying in this C major position. And if you watch Tony Rice, he really kind of just plays out of that C major position quite a lot. And that works because the A minor chord is the relative minor of the C chord, or of the C chord shape in this case. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna play that open D twice on a 16th note, followed by an open G, and then a downstroke on that third fret A. And you'll see a big gap there where that G chord comes along. And really, I just kind of left that open there. Okay, and right after that third fret A, there's a bit of a gap there over that G chord. And then we're gonna play open G on an upstroke, followed by downstroke on the open D. That's on an eighth note. Okay, and then right after that, we have an open D to second fret D. And again, you'll see that I'm just playing my, my C chord shape. Okay, right after that open D to second fret D, we're gonna have just a couple little two note chords here. And those chords are gonna be open G first fret B, second fret G first fret B on an upstroke. So I'm just putting down my middle finger there. I still have my ring finger kind of in that C major chord position. And then we're just gonna take our middle finger off of the G string, so it's open G, first fret B again. And you're left with something like this. And then again, you'll just see those two pickup notes at the end of measure number two, the open A to second fret A. Okay, let's play measures one and two now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, 
three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, and that leads us to measure number three. Okay, looking at measure number three now, of course, this measure is repeated. So measure number one and measure number three are going to be identical. They're going to be the same chords and the same notes. So just to review, we're going to be playing that pickup measure coming out of measure number two, that open A to second fret A. And then again, that open D to second fret D. And the downstroke on the upper register of the C chord, followed by the pull off down up on that F chord shape there. Then we have another pull off there on the second fret G to open. Then we have our third fret D to open G. So you're kind of holding that F chord without that middle finger down. So that middle finger, the G is just open there. Okay, and that brings us into measure number four. Okay, looking at measure number four now, we have the same chords as measure number two, but the melody is slightly different here. And again, we're going to be starting off here just holding our C chord shape again, even though we have an A minor to a G. And we're going to start on this open G to first fret B, and then a hammer on from the open D to second fret D. Okay, right after that hammer on, we have another open G to first fret B. And then instead of a hammer on, we have a pull off from the second fret D to open. You'll see I have that, that G kind of ringing out underneath. Then from there, we have the C chord starting on a downstroke from the third fret A, second fret D open G, and then an upstroke on that first fret B. That's alternating picking. Okay, and then from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our ring finger down to that third fret low E, and then play an open G to first fret B again. And you'll notice that I'm just holding this chord it's sort of like a modified C chord that I like to play when I'm doing alternating bass. So the alternating bass of the C chord is going to be 3rd fret A to 3rd fret E. So that's why I like to just move my ring finger down and just kind of play that modified C shape. Okay, let's play measures 3 and 4 now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three. Four. Okay, and that leads us into part B. So thanks for checking out Church Street Blues Revisited Part A. If you're interested in the full lesson, you can go over to my website, brandonjohnsonguitar.com, where I have the Part B melody for Church Street Blues as well as brand new updated backing tracks and the rhythm video as well, where I cover kind of a lot of the rhythm concepts and the chords 
that are used in this song. So if you're interested in that, definitely go check it out, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.